What is going on, everybody? I am Jabby Koei, joined by Amber Trujillo. Hello. And uh, you are very much in the science community thing stuff. Are we allowed to say who you're working with now? Um, I think so. I don't see why not. Okay, so you're working with Bill Nye. Yeah, so okay. he is uh, the CEO of mm-hmm. our organization, the Planetary Society. It was founded. Mm-hmm. By Carl Sagan, Bruce Murray, and uh, Lou Friedman. So, there, there you pretty go. cool people. So, uh, we're looking at what happens if you destroy a black hole. And this is one of those things that I ponder in the dead of night. Plus, <laughs> Chris has got... Stare, <laughs> stare blankly at the wall. <laughs> yeah, Chris has got, got the answer. So, you guys, if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button, bell icon, all notifications. Pretty please vote this up. Let YouTube know you're enjoying what you're watching. Follow Amber on the social media and uh, Chris Scott, of course. All linked in the description below. Here we go. Black holes can destroy everything. But can they be destroyed? What happens if we push physics to the absolute limit, maybe even breaking it and the universe in the process? Let's create a tiny black hole about the mass of our moon in the Kurzgesagt labs and try to rip it apart. Experiment 1. Nuke it. Big booms break things, so to set the mood, let's explode the world's entire nuclear arsenal around our black hole. Boom. Black holes swallow whatever crosses their event horizon, matter and energy. And since E equals mc squared, all the energy that enters a black hole increases its mass. The Mm. mass of a black hole is proportional to its size, so as we nuke our tiny black hole, it just gets bigger and more massive. So that wouldn't work. (laughs) Yeah. That's the point of that, right? (laughs) You just throw everything you got at it, it's just going to make it bigger. It just eats it. I saw a science video a long time ago, this is what popped into my head when he was talking about all that, that the sun is like the equivalent of 10,000 nuclear missiles going off every minute or something like that, or every second. Well, so you have to quantify what kind of nuclear missile are you talking about? Is it a fission bomb or a fusion bomb? So with the sun, Mm -hmm. it goes through something called nuclear fusion, fusion, which is hydrogen fusing into helium. So if you've seen Oppenheimer, the bomb that they use at the Trinity test was a fission bomb. So 10,000 of those. Yeah. So so (laughs) exactly. (laughs) I don't know what kind of bomb they're referring to, but that essentially splits the atom. Okay. Whereas fuse, you fuse the two atoms, gotcha. which is more power. So fusion, more powerful, fission, less powerful. Still, uh, still going to mess you up, though. Annihilate each other. What will happen if we throw a moon's massive antimatter at it? Mm. Unfortunately, when an object enters a black hole, the black hole will completely delete its past identity, whether it's made of matter or of antimatter. Interesting. Didn't know that. Black holes only care about gravity, which only depends on the total mass energy of an object. And the mass of a particle is the same as its corresponding antiparticle. So what if you throw so a black hole at a black an anti-moon hole? has the same effect as throwing a moon. Ooh. The black hole just gets it's more bigger. massive. This deleting ability of black holes is pretty interesting. It means that despite their size and power, black holes are, in a way, similar to elementary particles. An elementary particle like an electron is an extremely simple object, fully specified by just three numbers, its mass, spin, and charge. And amazingly, the same is true for black holes. They have a mass, they can rotate, and carry an electric charge. Once a black hole forms, it doesn't matter if it comes from a collapsed star, an anti-star, or a banana, it will always be fully described by those three numbers. Why is it always bananas? But if a black hole is basically a weird particle, could we destroy it with an anti-black hole? Oh. You called it. Experiment three, anti-black hole. How would you? How exciting. A particle has the same mass as its corresponding antiparticle, but opposite charge. Since a black hole has mass and electric charge, its corresponding anti-black hole should have the same mass and opposite electric charge. What if we make them collide? Sadly, the charge will just add up and cancel out. So after the collision, we'll just get a new black hole twice as massive with no charge. So they just keep growing. Okay, we need to think bigger and stretch physics harder. Can you surround a black hole with a Dyson sphere? Is that possible? I don't think, I mean, I'm not an astrophysicist and I am a little confused about how black holes exist in space, but like, because it's it's not filled with anything. There's no matter, so you can't put a Dyson sphere around it. 
It's doing something because it's spinning like stars around it at uh, absurd speeds. Right. So it's falling into space time. It's it's the it's the huge weighing down of mm. space time. Look, space time is weird. And I always have you ever tried to picture what space time would look like in three dimensions? Like try to picture time spatially. Constantly thinking about it. Are you? It makes me <laughs> want to throw up. So like I can't. So that's what that's what that question makes me feel like. Experiment four. Destroy the event horizon. Mm. It's true that a black hole can carry spin and charge, but even for these crazy objects, there are limits. If the spin or the charge of a black hole becomes too large, something really weird will happen. The event horizon will dissolve. What? In a simplified way, we think of black holes as hiding a singularity inside, an infinitely compressed mass with such strong gravity that absolutely nothing can escape from its surroundings, not even light. This is why a black hole looks like a black sphere of nothingness. The event horizon is the outer edge of this ultimate prison. Cross it, and you'll never be able to come back. But when a black hole rotates, it works a bit like a spinning washing machine. It's as if the rotation wants to repel nearby objects and push them out of the black hole, which doesn't happen because its gravity is so strong. But if the rotation gets too fast, this effect will win and the event horizon will disappear. Nearby objects won't be imprisoned forever anymore. The same thing happens with the electric charge. Make it too large and our ironclad jail will break open. If we manage to destroy the event horizon, the singularity would still be there and objects would still naturally fall towards it. If you hit it, you would still die horribly and quickly. But the vicinity of the singularity won't be an inescapable prison anymore. You could get as close as you want and come back. This should count as destroying the black hole. Can we do it? That did my head in a little bit. I honestly, like, words were coming into my ears and I, I just, my brain just quit. Okay. I was like, <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one. I'm glad I'm not alone there. <laughs> That's one like, of the videos that you have to put on super slow motion yeah. or rewatch like five times. I, I got the basic principle of it, which is if you stripped away outer layer of the black hole and the all you had horizon. was a singularity, it would still have the ability to like pull you in and spaghettify you, mm -hmm. but you could, but you wouldn't be stuck. You could get away. I don't get that. <laughs> that seems contradictory. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. Overfeeding. All we have to do is to overcharge or overspin the black hole. We could do this by throwing objects with a small mass and a lot of charge or angular momentum so that the charge or spin increases faster than the mass. We have to overfeed the black hole until it reaches the point where it breaks open. However, whether you can actually do this is the subject of passionate argument among physicists. Think of a charged black hole. Equal charges repel each other, and the more of the same charges you squish together, the more they push back. So let's say that we have a negatively charged black hole, and we want to overfeed it with electrons, for example, whose charge is far larger than its mass. The electrons will feel an electrostatic repulsion, and the more electrons we throw, the larger the negative charge of the black hole will be, and the stronger the repulsion. But once we reach the upper limit, the electrostatic repulsion will be so strong that it won't allow any more electrons to come in. At this point, the black hole will refuse to be overfed. With the spin, it's similar. Once the black hole reaches its upper limit, it won't gobble more spin. But some scientists have discovered what looks like a loophole. If an instant before the black hole reaches the limit, we throw the right amount of matter in in just the right way, it looks like we could actually overfeed it. Most scientists are skeptical, but let's give it a try anyway. The end. Breaking physics. There is a catch, though. The event horizon of a black hole hides the singularity. So destroying the horizon would leave us with a naked singularity, one that is not hidden by an event horizon. Something we haven't even seen. And this seen. poses a problem. Right. It could mean the end of physics as we know it. Okay. There's a big dirty <laughs> secret about black holes. We broke. Contrary to widespread we belief, the, the singularity of a black hole is not really at its center. No. It's in the future of whatever what? crosses the horizon. I don't. Black holes warp the universe so drastically this gives me an that anxiety at the event attack. horizon, space and time switch their roles. Once you cross it, space falling towards the center means like going towards the future. That's why you can't escape. Stopping your fall and turning back would be just as impossible as stopping time and traveling to the past. So the singularity is actually in your future, not in front of you. 
And just like you can't see your own future, you won't see the singularity until you hit it. But you also can't hit something that's in your future, only sort of experience it, like you'll experience your next birthday when it happens. The singularities that are in the future are not a problem because we can't see them or interact with them. But a naked singularity would be in front of us for all of us to see. What would we see? Well, the whole point is that it's impossible to know. A singularity is a region of infinite gravity, and gravity is the bending of space-time. At a singularity, the bending is so radical that the fabric of space-time is literally broken. Space and time don't exist anymore. This means that you can't predict anything, since predicting means making a forecast about where and when something will happen. But where and when have lost their meaning. So we have an unpredictable thing with infinite gravity and therefore infinite energy. This means that anything could come out of it for no reason, from a pile of bananas to lost socks or a solar system. Predictability, causality and physics as we know it would break down. We think that singularities should exist in nature because we can prove that under very general conditions, gravitational collapse leads to the formation of singularities. However, scientists think that nature forbids the formation of naked singularities. Something enforces the creation of an event horizon around them to prevent their insanity from infecting the rest of the universe. Without event horizons, physics may not make sense at all. So although black holes have been portrayed as the ultimate monsters of the universe, they may actually be the heroes that keep us safe from the madness wow. of singularities. Interesting. So if we do destroy the horizon, we might destroy the fundamental rules of the universe. You know what? Let's not do that. I think all this is wrong. I saw I saw Interstellar. You, you go in there, you don't see the future, you see the past. When they start talking about time, it's a time, the arrow of time is super interesting, right? Einstein said there is uh, no past, present, or future. It's just a persistent illusion. Have you seen Dark? Yes, the season oh one. Gosh. I saw season one. Brilliant. It, is that it the is, one with the German the German show yes, with the cave? They, did, they yeah. did such a brilliant job at trying to talk about the past, present, and future all existing together. When they started talking about you cannot hit the singularity because it is in the future. Yeah. If you think of it on the scale of the way some physicists think of it, it's all happening at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Which, Which is it, cray. It hurts my head. The more I watch science videos, the more I think we are in a computer simulation of some kind. The whole thing about like the rules, because like the time travel thing mm -hmm. where you can't go back in time and kill your grandfather because that would erase you from existence. Instead of actually erasing you from existence because that's a paradox, it would just create a new timeline branch or something, something, something. And I'm like, all of this is a computer. That's yeah. the only reason it makes sense. <laughs> well, it's it's nuts. And you know, a lot of physicists will say you cannot go back in time. You can only go forward in time because of entropy. Entropy, it's the second law of thermodynamics, I think. It only decays. Okay. So you cannot go back in time. But it's, it. oh my gosh, I can get into a whole yeah. thing with, with the idea of time. It okay. makes my brain <laughs> Well, let's just keep moving forward, as you say. <laughs> as far as we know, there's just one safe method to destroy a black hole. Wait. Wait. All black holes emit tiny particles, a phenomenon called Hawking radiation. This process causes them to slowly lose mass until they eventually evaporate, leaving behind no horizon and no naked singularity. The time it takes for a black hole to completely evaporate depends on its mass. For our mini black hole the size of a speck of dust, it will be about 10 to the power of 44 years, 10 billion trillion trillion times the present age of the universe. So is it possible to destroy a black hole? Yes. We just have to wait. Well, that was interesting. Yeah. It, hurt. it did a successful job of like making my head hurt a little bit. These are concepts that are obviously not meant for our, our feeble little brains to like try to contain. Yeah, uh, it, you can understand it through math, and unless you understand the math behind it, it's a lot harder to yeah. just think of it. I enjoyed getting my head done in like that. It's a challenging thought process of considering the possibility of what does the is singularity even look like? It's it's swallowing star matter all the time, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's just, because it's, I remember uh, when they talked about, uh, in some science video I saw ages ago, I can't remember where, but they saw, they pierced through the center of our, the Milky Way or something mm -hmm. and saw the action happening around a black hole and mm -hmm. it looked impossible because stars were being flung around at yeah. absurd speeds. And so presumably it's constantly e ingesting star stuff. Right. You know, I would imagine that what's in the center of that singularity is absurd heat and blinding light. Yeah, I mean, it I think what you're referring to is gravitational lensing, where it kind of, when you see it in pictures or on, you know, Interstellar, which they were the first ones to kind of like 
say what like a black hole would look like. They weren't exactly right, Kip Thorne will say that. But basically it's just like the lensing of the stars behind it. And a cool experiment actually to kind of see this visually and don't try this at home okay. because you have to break a glass is a wine glass. And you take out the bottom of a wine glass and you, you know, you shave off the top so it doesn't break it and you just have the bottom mm -hmm. of the wine glass. You draw a little dot mm -hmm. and then you pass the bottom of the wine glass over that dot and it lenses. And that's the same, very similar to what a black hole does. Oh, gotcha. No, what I was talking about was a, little, it was a different thing. I forgot when it was discovered, but basically they were able to somehow, because you know, there's the, the, the spectrum of light. Mm -hmm. Somehow these scientists were able to, I can't explain it. I'm going to paraphrase it terribly, but all I know is they were able to pierce through mm -hmm. and see what was happening at the black hole. At the um the center of the Milky Way, if I'm not mistaken. There's the center of the Milky Way or the super... Yeah, I'm pretty sure. And well, there were, is a supermassive black hole in the middle of the Right, exactly. Way, yeah. and, and so they they saw what action was happening. I, I mean, I could try to find it real fast. It was one of those, like, videos where it's, like, only science nerds would really understand what the hell they're looking at. You like this video, right? You like this yeah. picture right here? You know what I'm talking about? That's like, gravitational lens. Right, well, exactly. But, like, only the science community appreciates this blurry photo, <laughs> right? No one outside of the science community really gets this. And so there was some kind of image taken and it, like, it was a series of photographs mm -hmm. to illustrate what was happening around the center, uh, a supermassive black hole that is in the center of the Milky Way. Mm -hmm. And it, would sh it was showing um, these objects like flying around it and they were like, they were just trying to make sense of it. And it was stars. It was stars flying around the center of the Milky Way. I enjoyed this uh, video uh, thoroughly and uh, hopefully you guys did too. And hopefully uh, your brain hurts too. Thanks so much for hanging out. Uh, subscribe, bell icon, all notifications, vote this up. Let YouTube know you enjoyed what you watched. I'm Jabby Kawe. This is Amber Trujillo. Peace out.